Alright, so today we got a special video for you guys today because I'm celebrating 2,000 subscribers. So that means we're going to do a Q&A video where I'll take all of your guys' questions from Instagram, from YouTube, from WhatsApp, and all the other social medias. And I'm going to answer them right here on camera for you guys. So actually, I get a lot of very similar questions. So hopefully by answering them all in one single video will help a lot of you guys out. So let's get started. So first question is a person from Kazakhstan. Uh, he graduated from University in Mining Engineering in 2008. And for the next 10 years, he wants to work in the mining industry in different positions from a miner to all the way to a manager. Uh, he wants to do a master's degree or PhD in mining engineering in Canada. Um, he watches my videos and he wants to know if it's possible to get a scholarship or a stipend. Um, so my answer to him was that yes, it's possible to get a scholarship or a stipend. Um, Canada has a lot of scholarships and a lot of grants. Um, there are some that are specific to the mining industry and there are some that are specific to the university. So it depends a lot on one, what school you go to, two, your grades, and three, the type of work experience or the extracurriculars that you have. Usually people that give out scholarships who are looking for a well-rounded student and has good grades and preferably, preferably has shown some interest in the mining industry, whether that's through work experience or some other extracurricular activities, or they have a really good goal statement for what they want to do in the mining industry. And so I also shared with him a link of 70, uh, 70 plus Canadian scholarships. So I'll actually drop that in the link in description below. Uh, and then a little bit about my own experience with scholarships in Canada. Um, so when I was in my undergrad, I did get a scholarship um, and I think they gave me around one or two thousand dollars every semester. So in order to apply for that scholarship, it was called the CMIEF, Canadian Mineral Industry Education Foundation Scholarship. Um, in order to apply for that, I had to give them my transcripts, I had to give them my resume, I have to write a statement about why I was interest, interested in the mining industry and what I hope to achieve in my mining engineering career. Um, so I gave them that. Um, they made their selections through candidates all across Canada and then in the end I was selected. Um, and then just afterwards I had to make sure that, um, let them know where I am in my degree. So like, am I in second year, third year? Am I on an academic term or am I doing a work term? And, they want to know about your progress in your journey as well. Um, let's see. Uh, I get a lot of questions about which um, university that people sh should choose. Um, usually it's immigrants um, either from India or from Africa looking to get into the mining industry in Canada. And they want to know which master's degree is suitable for them. Um, so I actually made two videos and also dropped them in the link in descriptions below. But it actually depends on several things, one, your budget. So some of the high ranked schools such as um, the top three in Canada are uh, UBC, University of Toronto and McGill. Those are the three best schools in Canada, not just in mining engineering, but overall. Um, and those schools typically they'll require a higher admissions fee and they'll also require, and they'll also have stricter uh, admission requirements. So looking at your English scores and TOEFL and IELTS, um, also in your GPA um, and they cost a lot more um, so those schools are usually more competitive and more difficult to get into um, so some of the lower ranked schools they do pretty well, uh, good as well so such as University of uh, Alberta, uh, Queens, Laurentian those are all good schools as well so um, I will say first things first is consider your budget um, then second see if you have if you meet the minimum uh, missions requirements. Again, and again, I talk about all of those schools in detail in the links uh, into those videos below. Um, as for job placements wise, um, pretty much most of the school, the job placements afterwards are all very good. Um, the only nuance that you should know about is your proximity to the specific employer that you wanna work for. Um, it doesn't matter too much, but it could help a little bit. So for example, if you have a lot of open pit experience and that's what you want to go into, um, 
And even if it's more specifically cold, then probably UBC is a better choice because they're a lot closer to a lot of the coal mines in BC. Um, but it's not to say that it's not impossible for you to work across different commodities. So for example, a lot of the oil sands are located in Alberta. So of course, the University of Alberta is a good school to choose. But then again, lots of people from the East Coast, such as University of Toronto or McGill or Queens, a lot of them actually work in the oil sands as well. So um, in the end, it doesn't matter too much. But if you know that you, there's a specific commodity that you want to work for, then I would say maybe tailor the university that you choose based on locations closest to those employers. Next question is, um, people want to know if they should choose Canada or Australia for mining. Um, I really can't decide on either of them because they're all, both very good countries. Um, lots of work opportunities, job opportunities in Australia and in Canada. Uh, both countries have really good safety standards and a strong mining industry culture. Uh, both countries are well known around the world for their mining industry, so they also have really good uh, mining engineering universities. So you really can't go wrong. Um, maybe some other details is, it seems like Australia, they offer a lot more fly and fly out jobs um, than compared to Canada. Um, so Canada does have some, but um, I feel like Canada also has a lot of workplaces where people live in town and just drive to work instead of doing the fly and fly out lifestyle and living at camp. Uh, the other thing is that Canada, uh, if you don't want to deal with cold weather, maybe Canada's not so good for you because as you know, Canada can get really cold in the winter up to negative 30, negative 40 um, during the winter time. Um, and so that's going to be something that you have to deal with not only during at work, but also in your own time as well after work. Okay, and then I have four questions, oh, sorry, five questions from a person. Um, give a little bit of background about him. Uh, he's doing his bachelor's degree in mining engineering. Uh, he's in his sixth semester and so has two more years to go. Uh, so he graduated in one year and then ultimately he wants to work in Canada as a mining engineer. Um, he did some research and wants to go to Canada for his master's and he has a few questions. Uh, so first question is, he's a, he wants to know which university he should go to. He's an average student um, and also he has a tight tuition budget. So um, again, probably the top three universities of UBC, McGill and University of Toronto. Um, those are probably out of the question uh, because those are the most competitive schools, so they'll look for the highest admission average, and those are the most costly schools as well. Um, so for him, I would suggest something like University of Alberta, um, Queens, um, Dalhousie, um, those are all really good schools as well, Then, but if, if he can't make that, then probably something like BCIT or maybe Laurentian. Uh, he wants to know, most universities offers two types of masters. One's a normal course space and the other is a thesis space. Which should he go? So for a master's degree, typically, if you want to land a job afterwards, I would recommend that you go for a course based masters. If you want to go to academia and do like research, for example, then I would recommend a thesis based masters. Again, with the course based masters, it's really important that you have uh, some type of work experience before you graduate. Um, so that's typically done uh, through co-op or some internship experience between your first and second year. Um, and the reason is, I guess it's pretty self-explanatory, work experience matters the most when it comes to landing a full-time job. So do whatever you can um, to land an internship because that experience would be really helpful in leveraging um, to get a full-time offer, whether it's from the same company or from companies uh, elsewhere. Are all postgraduate courses of two years long? A presence in, I'm looking at the Masters of Engineering and Mining and almost all of them are two years long. Um, yes, typically most of the master's program take two years long, but for, uh, for some of the thesis-based programs, you can um, extend your studies to complete your thesis, so it could take maybe three years, for example. Uh, is there any other course available after bachelor's in mining engineering or MEng? The only option? 
because my aim, my main aim is to secure a job in Canada. Um, so there are other options that you can choose. So for example, maybe like a master's in um, geotechnical engineering or a master's in civil engineering. Um, but the, for those roles, you're probably looking at um, just some of the geotechnical roles afterwards when you graduate and not maybe say like a mining engineering role because it'll be um, a little bit more difficult to uh, apply those skills um, into a mining engineering positions, especially when there are mining engineering candidates that you have to compete against. I heard that the universities work on a credit system and I'm completely new to this. Uh, is it really difficult? Uh, yeah, so about Canada is that we work on a credit system. So after you complete a course, um, you get a certain amount of credits and the amount of credits that you get will depend on the school system. So for example, in UBC is typically three credits per course, but for other universities, maybe one credit per course. Um, and then in order to graduate, you need to have a total number of credits. So for example, uh, let's just say if you need 24 credits to graduate from a school, uh, and each course gives you three credits and you need eight courses to complete the degree in order to graduate. And so that number of credits will usually scale down um, if say like a course uh, gives you only one credit. So typically across all universities in Canada, um, you probably just require a standard number of courses, not credits, but number of courses. Another question is from a person from Hong Kong who's considering to do a master's degree at UBC. Um, so he has three questions. First question is, is it easy to find an entry level job in Canada? Uh, so that actually depends on a lot of things. Um, it depends on the job market. So for example, maybe if the market is starting to downturn, then it's a, it's a lot harder. Um, so for me, I guess it was relatively easy because I have job experience um, like co through co-op uh, co and internships. So that helped me a lot because uh, when I before I even graduated, I secured a full-time offer by applying to the same company that I interned for. And, I was able to secure a job that way. Um, but during the downturns, um, I know that some people weren't able to secure a job. Like most people that were graduating weren't able to secure a job. Um, and that's just the nature of the mining industry. When it's good, then it's really easy to find a job. When it's bad, then it's really difficult to find a job. Um, but some things that are within your control, again, are your work experience, which mat again matters the most. Um, and to an extent, maybe your grades, but not a lot of employers look at your grades. But and and then the next thing would be your resume. So, are are you in involved in any extracurricular activities, uh, especially ones that are related to mining, like volunteering at events? Uh, maybe if you if you have some leadership skills or activities that require you to have good teamwork skills, um, then employers really look for those, and that will help improve your chances of getting a job. How is the average pay as an EIT? Um, so I actually have a video on the salaries within mining engineering, but as an EIT, you're probably expecting to make between 60 to 80,000 Canadian dollars per year. And that depends on, again, a few things, maybe your, um, your previous experience, if you have any. Uh, it also depends on the type of commodity that you're working for. So for example, like oil sands typically pay higher than other uh, commodities, diamond also pays really well as well. It also depends on the location. So if you're working at Vancouver, Toronto, or Calgary, um, typically your your salary is a little bit lower. Whereas if you work in camp or work in remote locations, um, they actually pay you a little bit extra to work at those remote locations um, as an incentive to attract you to work there. Um, so that's where you can find probably some of the higher starting pay. Okay. And then the next person was considering a Canadian master's in either mining or petroleum uh, engineering um, and he wants to know uh, which I would suggest for a career in Alberta uh, mining engineering or petroleum engineering um, and then I actually said both are good but I would recommend chemical engineering because it's a little bit more diverse in terms of the opportunities that you have um, the reason for that is because if you have a chemical engineering degree, um, you can work in both in situ assets. So that's conventional um, extraction of oil through wells, 
or you can work at non-conventional assets. So that's the truck and shovel mines for an oil sands mine. Yeah, so he also wanted to know like, why wouldn't you choose petroleum engineering? Because petroleum engineering really narrows you down to just petroleum um, jobs. But whereas chemical engineering is a little bit diverse where you can work at refineries, um, pretty much a lot, of, a lot of the oil extraction companies um, in Alberta, uh, there's probably some jobs there that you can apply with a chemical engineering degree, so it has a wider reach. And then actually sent him an art article from July 8th, uh, where actually it says that um, the University of Calgary actually stopped their bachelor's program in oil and gas engineering, and that's in response to the demands. Of, of those graduates, but also at the same time is because those graduates, they only have a really narrow scope of jobs that they can enter into. So it's a lot harder for them to get jobs. Whereas if they went into chemical engineering, then they have better reach uh, in terms of jobs that they can get into after they graduate. Okay, I'll finish off with this last question. Um, so this person wants to do, again, uh, wants to study in Canada with for a mining engineering degree. Um, not sure if he wants to do a master's or a bachelor's degree, but he says that um, the fees are very expensive, um, which can be true, for, especially for international students. You have to pay a premium to study uh, in Canada. Um, and then he wants to know what are the ways that he can offset the tuition costs. Um, so there are a few things I can do. One is apply for a student loan. Um, so you get the money, uh, but eventually you have to pay it back and plus interest. So it can be costly down the line, um, but that's one way to get in. And the other way is I would highly recommend that you do um, a co-op or an internship experience throughout your degree, um, especially if you're doing a bachelor's degree, you can do it, you know, like one year, two years of experience. Um, during your undergraduate degree, not only would you get the work experience, but you also get money to offset that tuition cost, um, which can be very helpful down the line to pay off your student loans if you have any. It's a really good idea. I strongly recommend everyone that if you do, if you are studying in Canada, Canada, whether it's a bachelor's degree or a master's degree, um, that you go and get some of some sort of work experience so that you're more employable when you graduate and you can make some money at the same time and don't rush to get your degree finished. So once again, thank you very much for 2000 subscribers and all your guys' support on each of my videos. If you guys want another q and I can certainly look into make another video. Uh, message me on Instagram. I'll be happy to answer all of your guys' questions. To the rest of you guys, have a good rest of your day and good luck and we'll see you next time.